Minecraft has plenty of distance limits over the years, from the far lands, to sound corruption, to even this kind of stuff, to way more than even that. That's what we will be talking about today, so buckle up because you are about to learn way too much about this game's distance limits. This is all of Minecraft's distance limits. Let's start with Classic Edition, 0.0.9a to be exact. In this version, you can simply just fall off the edge after about 128 blocks or so. But that's boring, so let's go to where it is interesting. 0.0.14a underscore 08 is the first version that I have with real distance limits that is at least a tiny bit interesting. But I'll go over this briefly to actually be able to legitimately do the interesting stuff. In this version, there are three options. Small, which is a 128 block wide map, Normal, which is a 156 block wide map, and Huge, which is a 512 block wide map. That's all there is for Classic, as it doesn't really last for that long, only lasting about six months for its development cycle. And of course, it's the first version of the game, so there's not gonna be much in terms of actual limits. So let's move on to the first actually decent version of the game, InDev. InDev starts in version Classic 0.31 in version 2009-1223, but the first version we're going to look at is InDev 2010-0131-2244. In this version, the way the map work changed, where you still have that boundary at 64, 128, or 256, but beyond the map is where it changes a little bit. So instead of a giant wall, it was just grass, and you could simply walk forever. Or at least you should be able to. In this version anyways, the terrain disappears beyond 2304 blocks out, and the sky does at 2560 blocks out. Beyond this, the hitbox becomes really fucking stupid for some reason, and beyond 8,388,608, since the ground isn't solid anymore, you simply just fall through the world, likely because of some floating point issues. Beyond 2,147,483,648, it's actually so bad that it's simply a line. And beyond 2 to the 63, the hitbox disappears entirely. And yes, you can go beyond 2 to the 63 in dev. Who knew? After this, literally nothing happens anymore, at least on this version of the game. However, in the next version, something slightly different happens. This is the one that does slingshot you back towards the map 2010 0212. In this one, you get yeeted back towards the map at ridiculously high speeds if you go far enough, and in the version, you can do something that you can't in nearly any other version, and that is going to NAN, which stands for not a number. And while I originally thought that as the closer you got to 2.17 billion, the more erratic Sun and Moon gets, I couldn't actually get that to work even though it should have. The game absolutely does still crash at 2,147,480,647 though. That has never changed. InDev stands for Infinite Development and is when Infinite Terrain Generation was added. As you may expect, this added a couple actual distance limits that involve glitches. The first of which starts into InDev 2010-0227-1433. This is the very first version to feature this, the Farlands. Well, the Stonewall Farlands, which are at 33,554,432, and with it, a very, very bizarre chunk glitch that detaches them from each other in a really weird way. And this gets worse all the way until 2.147 billion, until terrain generation stops completely. As far as I know, the game doesn't crash though. This will be fixed in the next version though, since the floats they used were changed back to doubles. If you don't know what those are, in simple terms, floats are numbers that use 23 bits for the number itself, with an exponent using 8 more bits. Beyond 16,777,216, or 2 to the 24, the precision gets so bad it can't represent one block anymore, so it's forced to use 2 for every next number. So it goes 16.777218 million, then 16.777220 million, whatever. With doubles, 52 bits are used for the number, and 11 for the exponent. So it takes far longer beyond the end of terrain generation before any real issues begin. And then, the best glitch in history was accidentally added on the 27th, the Far Lands, and with it, likely the Farther and Fringe Lands. However, the Far Lands look a little off. Why is that? 
Well, until 2010-04-13, the thing used to make the terrain, called interpolation, was the same on the y-axis as the x interpolation per block, which is 171.103 units, which means it interpolates every four based on the noise scale. However, by 2010-04-13, it was changed to 85.5515. This caused the noise scale to be interpolated every eight blocks instead of four, giving the far land this look y'all know and love today. What I think also starts here is the stripe lands, but that's just a theory I can't quite prove yet. However, considering that the terrain generation had changed by the time the far lands were implemented, I feel like it does make sense that they would exist. The next distance effects begin in June, and they're all pretty minor, but they are noticeable. Between the 7th and 24th of June, these glitches were added in order. 1. Ladders are stretched at high distances in 0607. 2. Water and lava don't render properly in 0616. 3. Rails are fucked at high distances in 0618. 4. Minecarts are placed incorrectly at high distances in 0624. And finally, 5. Chunks don't render properly at high distances in the beta 1.7 way, not the old inf dev way, which the reason for this is calling. Which basically what calling does is it makes the rendered stuff a slice of what's around you. Anyways, this becomes so bad with the precision that it just doesn't work properly anymore. And this can even be seen in modern versions as shown here. Another beta glitch is added on the 11th of June. And this is that infamous camera glitch that was a problem, probably caused from your camera being a float instead of a double, at least I think. The earliest possible distance to actually see this is 8,192. Yes, actually, 8192. As you can see, beyond 8192, the hitbox of blocks becomes very, very slightly less precise, or at least enough to see. Then 16384, then 32768, 65536, all the way until literally infinity every power of two. So by 524,288, the issue becomes one entire block pixel, and by the far lands, it is actually one entire block. On top of that, that stupid, horrible beta lag that's literally everywhere in that fucking version is added too. In alpha, no actual changes were really made to terrain generation, and only two very minor bugs at high distances were added. The first of which is wrestling gets really stretched at high distances, which causes stuff like this to happen. And snow also appears visually stretched as all hell on the y-axis at high distances, and disappears completely beyond 2,147,483,647. Apart from that, there is nothing else that changed. Beta. This is the version of the game that most people experienced these glitches in originally, or at least very likely, and this is the first time that the spawn chunk glitch is actually properly able to be seen. Before we do that, however, there's a lot of other stuff that I want to go over, starting in beta 1.0 of all things, and likely even earlier than that. In this version up until beta 1.7.3, the farlands existed in their current state along with the farther lands which you can see here. Also, ghost chunks exist in the world beyond 32 million, which is actually entirely intended behavior, because I assume Notch didn't want anyone reaching any glitchy areas. And then at 50.203 million, a new set of farland shows up, but the visual difference is relatively minor. Except for when it's not. Yeah, that's pretty trippy. Anyways, the next thing, however, isn't even remotely close to intended. At 2,147,483,647, your game crashes because terrain can't generate anymore. However, you can teleport past this, which is how the next things were found. Fancy clouds stop rendering somewhere between 25,769,803 and 4,000. After doing a little bit of research on my own, it turns out that at that boundary is right where the clouds fly beyond the 2,147,483,647 cloud pixel away from 00. zero. By the way, each cloud pixel, which is just one pixel in the cloud texture, is 12 blocks wide as shown here, and dividing 25.769 something billion by 12 gives, wouldn't you know it, 
anywhere between 2,147,483,583 and 2,147,483,666. That is shockingly close to the 32-bit integer limit, and I believe they disappear because they break that limit. Anyways, beyond this, at 34,359,738,368 blocks, chunks start overwriting each other at, say it with me now, 2,147,483,648 chunks away. And at this point, the game will crash, unless you teleport beyond the area where you can see that chunk as far as I'm aware. The next limit is the region overwrite limit, which actually can't be seen in game. If you didn't know, in Minecraft, a region is a 512 by 512 section of your world sword in the files, basically telling Minecraft where chunks are. The region overwrite limit is... 1,099,511,627,264 blocks away. And that number divided by 512 is, again, say it with me now, 2,147,483,647. That's all for Beta 1.0, but in Beta 1.6 Test Boat 3, a new glitch emerged. And that glitch is the Spawn Chunk glitch. This glitch occurs every multiple of 2 to the 19, or 524,288 blocks away from spawn, where your spawn chunk is regenerated. But it doesn't just look like the exact same chunk. No, it literally is the exact same chunk. But why does this happen? So after doing even more research, I found that Minecraft stored your chunk position in one single 64-bit integer. 32 for the X and 32 for the Z axis. But before they switched to that, in beta, they used one single 32-bit integer with 15 allocated to X and Z instead of 16 for some reason. Anyways, that means beyond 2 to the 15 chunks, it would wrap back to zero. But why does it only happen to one of the chunks? Well, it's because your spawn chunk, the one you spawned in, is the only one actually always stored in memory all the time. But the other question is, why 2 to the 19 blocks? Well, that's because chunks are 16 by 16, not 1 by 1. 16 is 2 to the 4, which multiplied by 2 to the 15 gives you, wouldn't you know it, 2 to the 19. It's also why when you teleport out really far directly from your spawn chunk, the chunks around your spawn chunk slowly deload and spawn the chunks that are meant to be there. The server tends to lag behind a little when you're out that far enough, so it has to load the new chunks in, but it can't really do it all that fast. On top of that, you can literally take chunks that far out back to spawn with you because of the same bug. Just go to a copy of your spawn chunk or a little bit around it, and then teleport back to 00, zero or any multiple at 2 to the 19, and boom. This also means you can get the far lands near the spawn. And one more interesting tidbit is that the glitch doesn't actually copy your biome data, but the rest of it is copied. Oh, by the way, also every change you make in those glitch spawn chunks will save in their original position. If you want to know more about this, here's this video linked by Anthenum below because I want to go to the next version, which is beta 1.8. In beta 1.8, there were a lot of changes to distance limits, with the worst of them being the far lands removed to 53.905 quadrillion blocks away. A couple other things occurred too. Most of these visual bugs where things were stretched was entirely fixed, and the ghost chunks now spawn at 30 million instead of 32 million. And if you fly past 30 million 32, you just get stuck in a wall and can't do anything about it unless you close the game with something like Task Manager and edit your NBT data. Another major thing was that the spawn chunk glitch was moved to 2 to the 36 because they changed how chunk coordinates were stored. Now they are a 32-bit number for X and Z instead of 15, which now means they repeat at 2 to the 32 or 4,294,967,296 or so. This, multiplied again by 2 to the 4, is 68,719,476,736 blocks. The thing is that this time, since Minecraft now used a different world save format called Anvil, it copied the biome data as well. 
Apart from that, it's the exact same glitch as before. The Fartherland's distance was changed too, going from 1.004 billion all the way to 4 quintillion 312 quadrillion 430 trillion 291 billion 606 million 100,245 blocks in that 64-bit mod. The French ends, I believe, weren't changed at all whatsoever, and even if they were, they went from only a couple duodecillion to 8.175 quindecillion. More on all of that later, by the way. Also, that chunk overflow problem was also likely moved all the way out to 2 to the 67. We are now finally ready to move on to release versions where I can showcase the farther lands in their, what should be, proper distance. The first one I'm going to show is 1.2.5. The reason for this is that the mod I have only actually works in this version. And in it, the Farlands are moved to 53.905 quadrillion, as I mentioned earlier. As you can see, the Farlands are now just chilling at that distance. And between this and the farther lands here, which are at 4.3125 quintillion, what looks like repeating terrain appears. Here's 100 quadrillion, 200 quadrillion, 400 quadrillion, 1 quintillion, 2 quintillion, and 4 quintillion. As you can see, there's these repeating sections of terrain appearing that start at 2, then goes to 4, 8, 16, and finally 32 chunks per section. This is generally what people call the farther -er lands, but the thing is, this is actually not a new set of far lands. Far from it. What it actually more likely is, is an artifact of terrain generation losing precision the further out you go. So until it can generate new terrain, it simply just repeats itself. And the farthest lands? Well, that's just the farther lands, but 64-bit edition with the repeating terrain bug. Yeah. Things are going to be more minor from now on. Though in this version, the world board was changed again to 32 million, and if you go beyond it, you just get kicked for being in what's called an illegal position. And in 1.3.2, there isn't really anything notable, except there's actually a lot. So, in this version, with this mod made by McQA, I can actually see the fringe lands in their real positions. 8.175 quindecillion to 20.4 quindecillion blocks away, and while it does take forever to load, well, anything for that matter, it does let us see the true extent of the fringe lands. As you can see, this is 8 quindecillion, 175 quatortecillion, 100 tritecillion blocks away which is literally an 8 with 48 trailing zeros. At 9 quintessillion, 176 quatortessillion, 239 tritessillion, you can see the true beginning of where the real breakdown starts. And at 10 quintessillion, 299 quatortessillion, 981 tritessillion, it thins into a sky grid. And finally, at about 20 quintessillion, it starts disappearing entirely, with some lines going to probably a few sextacillion, potentially into the octodecillions, and honestly, it's pretty trippy to look at. In 1.7, the current world border distance of 30 million was chosen, but it only extends to about 2.147 billion blocks up, just as it does now. Pressing F5 anywhere up this high also crashes the game, and finally in 1.8, the world border we all know and love today was added, and terrain stops generating at 30,240 blocks. However, we aren't quite done yet, because even beyond here, there is still actually quite a few distance effects that I need to go over. So, this one is pretty minor, but in release 1.9, the way temperature values work was broken, with them now relying on floats for some reason. This caused issues where beyond 16,777,216, snow and rain and things like that started not generating or happening in the right locations properly, leading to stuff like this happening, where snow was very patchy and in very square chunks, getting worse every power of two, like so. That's the only thing in 1.9, so now here's what this video was really made for. This version was chosen for one thing and one thing only, because the LAM A made a mod to not only bring the fringe lands back in this version, but you can now see the shape of the terrain being visually fucky once now you set your noise scale to around 1 septillion in this mod. It looks a bit strange, doesn't it? 
Well, this is due to the reason the fringe lands and the sky grid, which is shown here, happen. Essentially, in the game's code, the noise scale number, called the fraction, is supposed to stay between 0 and 1, which it generally does do so, until you reach the far lands. Past this, it starts giving fucking massive fractions that are simply just the number you're on, minus the 32-bit integer limit, plus some really stupid math. So, at 3 billion, it would be that minus 2,147,483,647, which is 852,516,000 plus 353. And this fraction, I believe, keeps exponentially increasing as well, to the point where only 6 blocks into the Farlands or so, it's already 6 quadrillion. The farther lands happen at 1,004,065,921 for much the same reason. The selector noise, which gives the far lands its variation, overflows at where the farther lands start, 1.004 billion. This is exactly 80 times further than the far lands. Can you guess why? Well, get this. Selector noise ticks up 171.103 every 80 blocks instead of 1, for a total of 2.1387875 per block. The next limit isn't able to be seen until 8.1751 quintessalian blocks as I explained earlier. However, now we can properly see all this breakdown into the sky grid in only a couple thousand blocks of distance with this world I set to 1 quator decillion noise scale which basically speeds up how fast that Perlin noise value increases by that many times. At 8.1751 quintessilian, it's degenerating in the comb artifacts. By 9.1762.39 quintessilian, it looks like this, and at 10.299981 quintessilian, it is fully broken into the sky grid that we are used to. But hold on, what about on both axes? Well, on both axes exactly, it happens at only 42 septillion, skipping the other three stages of the grading entirely, actually. Well, the pillars happen at that distance. The real sky grid starts at 65.434133 septillion. On the z-axis, actually, it doesn't even degrade in stages at all. It just degrades gradually until it reaches the sky grid at the same distance as on the x, and it actually starts at the second stage of the fringe lands on the x-axis. Well, why does this happen? Well, while I'm not entirely sure, there is a way to calculate when it will break as courtesy of Alam A. What you do, at least for the x-axis, is you take the fifth root of 179.769 uncentillion, multiply it by the noise fraction, and then you take all of that and divide it by 171.103. Once this number gets above a certain point, and no, I'm not sure where, the fringe lands as a whole stop properly generating. On the z-axis, you do the exact same thing, but with the sixth root. If you want more of an explanation on the matter, this video I made, which is actually my very first scripted one, will be linked here. So yeah, you can watch that after this video. But just so you know, this sky grid extends up until somewhere around two sextacillion blocks. And what's insane is, as I was writing the damn script, I found out that not only does the overworld have fringe lands, the end and nether do. Holy shit! And I don't think anyone has ever discovered these in any capacity until writing this. Just wow. And as you can see, the end and nether generate slightly differently than the overworld do. Pretty neat. In 18w43a, the lighting engine was changed to what is used today, and in that version, a very simple bug appeared where beyond 33,554,432, the lighting just simply stopped working. And in 18w46a, the end glitch that has now been around for five and a half years started. The end donut glitch. This is described as the end basically being broken up into donuts when you go far enough, with this rain originally stopping at 370,727, then starting again at 524,288, then stopping again around 642,000, then starting again around 741,000, yeah. This is in a repeating pattern forever until the game crashes when you go beyond 2.147 billion. But the most insane bit about this isn't the glitch itself, no. It's that they all have the same area. Yeah. And the reason this even happens is this code right here. 
What happens is once numbers get high enough, they just generate NaN. And the way we calculate where a new donut will start is you take the radius for each donut, square it, and then you multiply it by pi. Then you double it, divide it by pi, and then square root it. And ta-da, 524,287.15. Now you can take this number and do the same math, which gives you around 642,000. And if you can't understand that, here's this Desmos graph which you can use to visually see this glitch in action. When it crosses you're going up, it switches to land, and when it crosses you're going down, it switches to void. This mod I made for 1.20, because yes, this still exists in modern versions, removes terrain gen limitations up to 2.147483 billion. And you can see as it gets more and more frequent, until at some point, the distance between donuts gets so small, it just switches between void and land every chunk. And with the Null Escape mod, this actually looks really fucking cool because of these pillars that generate that are actually affected by a really stupid bug, which somehow removes the texture of the block I'm looking at when I'm only a couple blocks from them. Plus that calling bug from earlier, which is actually probably why it happens to begin with. In this version, the Farlands actually change in shape to a more blocky squares look as shown here, as noise caves were added which fucked over the terrain generation to this. On top of that, it actually looks more like normal terrain near the top now since there is a smoothness factor added for when terrain reaches the top of the world. However, this would be reverted back to the previous Farlands y'all are used to in 21W15A due to something I think with not overworking the Mojang employees, which, you know, makes sense. And also in 1.17, teleporting to 33,554,432 now crashes the game for whatever reason, but only in the way it does in beta, apparently. If you teleport past this distance, your game is actually entirely fine, but it almost exactly at the distance, if you load the chunks into your view, it will crash. This is the final version where any distance limits change, and it's with the Farlands once again. Now instead of being how they were in 1.17, or the mid infdev to beta days, they are more reminiscent of how they look in infdev 2010-02-27, where it's just a massive wall. The only changes are, one, they spawn at 12,550,824, instead of 33,554,432, and two, it has grass on top. Basically, it's just a Stonewall Deluxe Edition, and again, you can see that all the terrain smoothing from 1.17 is there. The farther lands actually do still exist too, and in modern versions as well. As for the fringe lands, I really don't know and I can't check, even by going to the code and changing the noise scale values. That's all for 1.18. Now there's only one or two things I need to cover, and that's all the stuff that exists today, which is only a couple things. And now, here are just a couple of things that exist today, because if I went through literally all of them, this script would be 5,000 words long, because it's already 4,617 words long. But there are two glitches, or something like that, that I would like to mention. One is sound position absolutely fucking kills itself beyond 268 million or so, and you can even hear slight issues at only 12 million. And here's a demonstration of what I'm talking about. And also, as another thing, when you use fireworks at any high distance, they just don't work for some reason. And that's it. All of Minecraft Java's distance limits, past and present, covered in my 200th video. Fucking incredible. Absolutely massive thank you to all my patrons for supporting me on Patreon, and also Pickle for making this fan art for me, because seriously, this is the best fan art I think I've ever seen, ever. Oh yeah, thank you all for watching this 30 minute literal fucking behemoth of a video because this took me two months to make and yeah, if y'all learned anything from it, I think though, you know, comment about it or something like that, that'd be cool. And if you liked the video and, you know, like my content, there's a couple of, um, 
I think liking and subbing would be pretty cool if you can go and do that. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll just see you in the next video. See ya!